If you want peace, prepare for war. It seems that this phrase is perceived in its own way in Beijing. On the anniversary of the Russian war against Ukraine, China presented its peace plan, where it declared its desire to end the armed conflict as soon as possible. At the same time, Wang Yi, the chief diplomat of China, is negotiating with the top military leadership of Russia. And two days later, CIA chief William Burns declares that Beijing is dangerously close to starting the supply of weapons to Moscow. Well, we're confident that the Chinese leadership is considering the provision of lethal equipment. We also don't see that a final decision has been made yet, and we don't see evidence of actual shipments of lethal equipment. Uh, and that's why I think Secretary Blinken and the president have thought it important to make very clear what the consequences of that would be. As well. And since February the 28th, Alexander Lukashenko is going to China on a four-day visit. The American Institute for the Study of War believes that Beijing can use Belarus to circumvent sanctions. Minsk will receive aid from China and transfer it to Moscow. Lukashenko himself only reinforces this hypothesis with the words that supposedly Belarus and Russia are jointly capable of creating any types of weapons. According to experts, if such a scheme is approved, Washington's reaction will be immediate. As soon as China resorts to such a process and sends certain weapons to Minsk through the Trans-Siberian Railway, and then they disappear, for example on the way to Belarus, and appear on our front line, then of course there will be automatic imposition of sanctions against China. It is clear that it is not yet known what will be included in these sanctions, but today we know that during the Hiroshima summit, the G7 are planning to develop a collective approach, in which case to sanction precisely China and Iran, which supply aid to Russia. This is, of course, unprecedented. China is now the only global power that can delay the defeat of Russia. Supplies of weapons from Iran and North Korea are not enough for the aggressor. And financially, these countries are as isolated from the world as the Kremlin. Therefore, China could serve as an economic bridge between Moscow and the West. The main flows of sanctioned products and goods of companies that left Russia go through China. For this, Beijing gains control over a significant part of the Russian market. Today, as we see, the dependence on energy products is critical. And the second, no less important sin is the dependence on industrial goods, on those components that can be used in industry. In fact, China will and does use the opportunity of the vacant niche, and it is trying to fill them. Without China, Russia, the Russian economy would be in a much more deplorable state. However, it is too early to say that China openly supports Russia. It consistently takes the position of not condemning, but also not supporting Russia on international platforms. And Kyiv considers Beijing as one of the possible participants in the international dialogue to force Moscow to peace. This was stated by the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, during his press conference on the anniversary of the Russian full-scale invasion. Reported by Diana Kolesnik, Danilo Kobza, UATV News.